Hi, this is Dr. Rudresh. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Medical Microbiology Guide. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. In the session 1, we discussed the definition and classification of sterilization and disinfection. In session 2, I will be discussing physical methods. Before proceeding, we will recall how we classified the physical methods of sterilization. It was classified into drying, heat, filtration, radiation and ultrasonic vibration. We are applying all these physical methods of sterilization in our routine life. Say for example, we dry the clothes, we heat the food so that it will kill most of the microorganisms. We filter our water before we drink. We also use the ultraviolet radiation to kill the bacteria in the water. Now let's discuss the methods one by one. Sunlight is a naturally occurring sterilant. It has ultraviolet light which kills the microorganisms. Sample and Greg in India, they did experiment using salmonella coated onto the thread. They exposed one thread to the sunlight and other they kept in the dark. On the exposed thread, the bacteria died in 2 hours, whereas they survived up to 6 days on the thread which was kept in the dark. But sunlight we cannot use it as an effective sterilant because most of the ultraviolet light is filtered by ozone. And also the ultraviolet light is distracted by the dust particles which is present in the air. Hence, we cannot use sunlight as an effective sterilant. Now, let us discuss the drying. About 70 to 80 percent of weight of bacteria is composed of water. If you desiccate water from the bacterial cell, then the electrolytes get concentrated, thereby halting the metabolic process. But drying is not a reliable method of sterilization because spores will not be killed and some of the vegetative bacteria can be converted into spore forms on drying. Heat is an ancient and most commonly employed method of sterilization. Two types of heat sterilization are available that is a dry heat and moist heat. The mechanism of killing of bacteria by dry heat involves either charring, denaturation of the bacterial proteins, oxidative damage and elevated electrolytes. Among all these four processes, oxidative damage is the most important process in killing the bacteria by dry heat. Moist heat kills the microorganisms by denaturation and coagulation of the proteins. You have to understand the term thermal death time. This is a time required to kill a suspension of organism at a predetermined temperature in a specified environment. Thermal death time starts after the specified temperature is reached in the instrument. The time required for sterilization is inversely proportional to the temperature. So as we keep on increasing the temperature, the time required will be decreasing. The thermal death time depends upon various factors. Presence of organic substances, protein, nucleic acids, starch, gelatin, sugar, fats and oil increases the thermal death time. Whereas, presence of disinfectants, high acid or higher alkalinity, it fastens the bacterial killing. Now, let us see the factors affecting sterilization by heat. It depends upon the nature of heat we use, whether we are using a dry heat or moist heat. In comparison to the dry heat, moist heat is having a higher capacity to transfer the latent heat to the article. And also, the dry heat takes more time to sterilize an article. Variations in temperature and time affects the sterilization process. The sterilization process depends upon the microbial load on the article. If the load is heavy, then the sterilization process may not be effective. Hence, we clean the articles before we sterilize them by 
heat. Sterilization is affected by the characteristic of microorganism we are dealing. If it is a spore or a prion, it will be more resistant to heat than compared to the vegetative forms. Lastly, the sterilization depends upon the type of material from which we have to remove the microorganisms. Let's discuss the dry heat. Flaming is a process in which the articles are directly heated over the blue flame of Bunsen burner. This method of sterilization is done for the, the straight wires or the wire loops which we use for bacterial inoculation and for sterilizing the tip of the forceps. But we cannot use flaming for most of the articles which are being used in medical setups. Incineration is burning at 872,200 degrees Celsius for converting the biomedical waste into ash. This reduces the biomass and easy disposal of the biomedical waste. Among the dry heat sterilization methods, hot air oven is very important. This is usually asked as a 5 marks question or a part of main question. Hot air oven is an electrically operated instrument which is widely used in hospitals. Now let's see the principle in which the hot air oven works. The dry heat inside the hot air oven causes the oxidative damage to the microorganisms thereby killing them. You should know the construction of hot air oven to understand the mechanism by which it acts. Hot air oven is an electrically operated instrument and it is made up of double walled stainless steel chamber. The chamber is fitted with the electrical coils and it has a thermostat which maintains the temperature inside the chamber. Hot air oven is provided with an insulated door which has a lock and handle. This prevents the escape of heat from the inside of chamber to the external environment. There are two types of hot air oven based on how we create the convection currents of air inside the chamber. The air which is near to the coil gets heated up and it moves up bringing down the cooler air near to the coil. This creates a air convection which circulates the air around the load. Those hot air ovens which work with the principle of this air convection currents are called as gravity convection type of hot air ovens. When we use a fan in the rear end of the hot air oven which will help in the distribution of hot air around the load, that type of hot air ovens are called as the mechanical convection type of hot air ovens. This is the construction of gravity convection type of hot air oven in which the external chamber is made up of heavy metal and next to it there is an insulation made from the glass wool. This glass wool will insulate the heat moving from coil to the exterior. The coils will be placed between the glass wool and the inner chamber. These coils are electrically operated. The inside chamber which is made up of stainless steel is provided with tray slots. The trays are porous which will help in circulation of air around the load. A temperature sensor which is placed inside the chamber will sense the chamber temperature and it gives an indication to the safety thermostat to regulate the current. The below panel shows the controls for the hot air oven. There can be an LED display which shows the chamber temperature or there may be a knob which will help in the adjustment of the temperature to the desired levels. There will be a load indicator, safety thermostat and the main on and off switch. In mechanical convection type of hot air ovens, the rear end is fitted with a fan. Next to the thick outer chamber, there will be a glass wool insulation. Between the glass wool insulation, 
and the inner chamber there is a air space within this air space the tubular air heaters are placed these air heaters will heat the air and the hot air is blown into the load with the help of motor driven blowers there is a sensor inside the chamber which controls the temperature the table shows the standard temperature and their exposure time for effective sterilization the most commonly used holding temperature is 160 degree celsius for 120 minutes that is 2 hours you must also know the other holding temperature and exposure time 180 degree celsius for 30 minutes 170 degree celsius for 60 minutes 150 degree celsius for 150 minutes 140 degree celsius for 180 minutes and 121 degree celsius for overnight the materials which are sterilized in hot air oven should not be heat sensitive glass wares like the glass syringes petri dishes flasks pipettes and test tubes are sterilized in the hot air oven some of the surgical instruments which are sharps like scalpels forceps scissors are sterilized by hot air oven chemicals such as liquid paraffin oil fats glycerol and glove powder which will be damaged if we keep it in an autoclave should be sterilized by hot air oven there are certain precautions one has to take while operating the hot air oven avoid overloading the items in the chamber if you overload the deeper portion of the load may not be sterilized properly hence we have to load the items in such a way the air should circulate all around it the material should be completely dry before we keep in the hot air oven if you keep a wet glassware inside the hot air oven the possibility of cracking will be there it is better to paper wrap the items which are kept inside the hot air oven flammable materials like rubber should not be kept in the hot air oven before you take out the items after sterilization the hot air oven should be completely cool to assess the efficacy of sterilization we use standard controls the controls are of three types biological indicators thermocouples and brown's tube biological indicators are nothing but the spores of clostridium tetani or bacillus subtilis subspecies niger the spores of these bacteria are coated on a paper strip at a concentration of 10 to the power of 6 colony forming unit per ml these strips are placed along with the load during sterilization and after the sterilization the strips is taken out and put into a growth medium if there is a growth of the bacteria then it indicates the sterilization process was not effective if we don't see any growth then it indicates that the sterilization process was satisfactory thermocouples are the electrical instruments which measures the temperature inside and controls the electricity brown's tube is a glass tube which contains a heat sensitive red dye which turns into green after being exposed to certain temperature so these tubes are used as a controls for both the hot air oven and autoclave this finishes the second session of sterilization and disinfection i'll continue with the moist heat sterilization in session 3 thank you for watching this video please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos